Hey, Ross. All right, what's up, Kev? Uh, wrong show. <laughs> we're not doing a cooking show here. Today, we're talking about induction technology. Oh, okay. okay. I got a little test for us. Some water. You're going to pour yours in there, and we're going to do gas versus induction. Are we okay? going to race? We, yeah, we're going to race right now. All okay. Right. So we've done induction before, but I've never actually done the side-by-side. -side. All right, lid like on, it? lid on, lid on, oh, oh. lid on. Are you fair as fair? All right, lid on. You ready? You guys, I am lit. All, All right. right, here we go. Here Start we the go. test. Here we go. Watch. So what is going on with the technology? I mean, what's actually happening? Right, so this is a portable induction cooktop. And if I were to pull this glass plate off, the ceramic glass, and look underneath, there'd be copper windings, right? So copper wire that's in a spiral configuration. So when I send electricity into this unit, it's actually going to send electricity through that copper winding. And what it actually does is creates a magnetic field, Yeah. All right. That's called induction. And that magnetic field excites the iron molecules in this pot. Excites me too. <laughs> but why does that cause heat? So iron is really, really good at when it, in the form of an induction process, it likes to get excited. Yes. It doesn't conduct electricity, it excites itself, it vibrates, and that friction creates the heat. And iron is the key, right? Because we've heard that you can't use just any pot on the uh, top of induction, right? That's right. Cast iron works amazingly well. Your stainless steels work well. Your enameled steels. The magnet test is really the real test. Ferrous materials, which will take the magnet. Ferrous is iron. Yeah, exactly. If you've no got it, here. it will work. And doesn't no work good there. Okay. So this is a targeted process, right? Yep. So the induction cooktop is targeted for this pot and pan, where gas is not targeted so much. Some of it goes to the pot. Well, I mean, but, the entire flame's underneath. Yeah, but the rest of it's going to the air around it in the surrounding air, right? So this is 90, oh, yeah. 80 to 90 percent efficient. This is 30 to 40 percent efficient. What? Right? Feel the difference. Super inefficient. So I can right? feel the heat. I've done this before, so I know I can touch. I feel nothing there. That's right. So here, take a camera. This is a thermal imaging camera. Nice camera. Take a, yeah, right? Take a look at my hand, and you're going to see the amount of heat oh, yeah. that my hand is absorbing from the flame. And, and I've got a number on your camera here. It, yeah. I don't know. It stops at 302. Is that maxing yeah, out? Yeah, it's maxing. It's, that's the maximum temperature that I can read. Here, So by comparison, <laughs> and if I look at the actual base plate right there next to the kettle, it's blue. That's right. 80-something degrees. It's bouncing around a little bit. That's right. But I can't see a line of heat just where the kettle hits the, the, the glass. That's right. Wow, that's, that's right. impressive. So cool, right? OK, so this is, I never even thought about that. So this is way more efficient. So this will boil water twice as fast as gas. Really? You Crazy, right? You think you're going to beat me? I think so. If you can hear this one, I think it's going. So we like the efficiency. It lends right. us some other things, though, right? Because we've got to put hoods over stoves. And I know with the big honking gas burners that we put in now, the hoods right. are huge. Right. So you've got large hoods. You've got a lot of ventilation here. You've got to exhaust all of that heat and all of this, the byproducts of the combustion that you're burning with that gas, right? right? The poor air quality has to get out. And you have to bring in makeup air to offset that so you don't depressurize the house. With this, you can put in a very modest fan, less than 400 CFM, and you can exhaust that. You don't need makeup air. Gotcha. And it's a big imp Is that a whistle? My whistle or your whistle? I, this is me. I'm going to let that go until I am. <laughs> oh, it is definitely you. Yep. All right, hang on. Let me see where I am. You're going to turn that Two off? Two and a half minutes. Two yep. and a half minutes. I'm turning mine off just so I can touch it here. Let's you see. Want me to leave this running? I've got, a, I've got a little bit of steam and a slight little simmer coming out little of Little bubbles. Yeah, so, a couple little bubbles there. I but yeah. I hope I turn that off. Oh, I'm not even off yet. Hang on a second. I'm going the other way. Now I'm off. Yeah, so you, you beat go. me handedly. Yeah. It's twice as fast. Yeah, right. so you've done it and, a bunch of times. And it, you know, it gives you other things. It's got, it's got really precise temperature control, right? So you can adjust it. Um, for, yeah, and, and so on a traditional electric, my grandmother's electric stove, yeah. they come up slowly, they go down slowly. If I remove this, it's still really hot. I mean, I can touch that. I can touch that. Yeah, I know. It's amazing. much better control. Much better control and much safer, Yeah. right? I could actually put a piece of paper, newspaper underneath there and actually run this same test. Doesn't matter. So uh, the lot you like about it, mm -hmm. any downsides? I mean, what's the cost comparison? Yeah, so I mean, induction is going to be more expensive than your typical electrical or gas ranges and stovetops. So that's you know, so it does come at a price premium. If you're comparing it to a high-end gas, it's going to be right there on a level playing field. Right. So it could potentially cost more. You yep. do need to have the, the right, right cookware necessarily. Yep, for sure. It won't work in a power outage, right? So you got to if you unless you have a backup generator or something like that, Good you point. know, versus gas. Do you think it's the future? Because we've known about it for a while. I don't see a ton going in. You think that's going to change? I really do think. I mean, we're seeing electrification movement across the United States. It's it's happening. And so, you know, people are moving to solar with battery storage. I think that is going to be the trend. And so when you can take this 
and you can you know cook with electricity versus gas that is a that's you know that's gonna be a big part of our future there are manufacturers that are working on this to go underneath your countertop so you make sure your countertop is completely invisible there is no stove visibly from your surface wait wait like so if i have a granite countertop it can yeah. be granite on top. granite quartz doesn't matter you can literally just put it on this equivalent of this burner but it's mounted underneath that's designers really cool, right? right now are running. You have a little flip down display. Induction stores. I know it's really cool. So that's going to be super sleek. Opens up a lot of possibilities for where they go and what they look like. That's right. That's nice. right. All right, Ross, I appreciate it. Cool. So what's next? Eggs? Let's do it. Next test. Thanks for watching. This old house has got a video for just about every home improvement project. So be sure to check out the others. And if you like what you see, click on the subscribe button. Make sure that you get our newest videos right in your feed.